The winter is one of my favorite times of the year because it offers the opportunity to actually see what animals might be walking past your home or around your neighborhood that we don't usually know are there, but in the winter they leave animal tracks in the snow. I hope this video equips you with the knowledge to get outside and track some animals this winter. Welcome to the Fair Glen Outdoor Classroom. My name is Ryan, and in today's nature video, I'm going to share with you the six observations you will need to make in order to confidently identify an animal's tracks in the snow. Each of these observations starts with the letter S, so they're much easier to remember that way. The first S of animal tracking is the step. The step includes the pattern and the way that the animal walks through the snow. That could be a diagonal pattern, it could be a single file line, or it could be something like a hop, where it's in groups of four. This will help narrow it down to the group of animal based on the way that it walks. The second part of the step is looking at the number of toes that the animal has. This will also narrow it down to groups of animals because animals like birds would have three front toes, animals like deer and moose would have two hooves, animals like coyote, fox, or wolves have four toe pads, and animals like weasels would have five claws. The next S stands for the size. If it's a tiny little wee track, maybe then it's a mouse. If it's a much bigger track, then maybe it's something like a bear or a moose. So the size of the track can sometimes give us a clue as to the size of the animal. The next two S's are stride and straddle. The stride refers to how far the animal steps as it walks, and the straddle refers to how wide apart the left and right side of the feet are as it walks through the snow. The next S refers to speed. If animals running and jumping and leaping through the snow, the patterns will look much different than if it's casually walking along or if it's slowly stalking prey. So these will give you a clue as to maybe what the animal is doing, but they're also important to consider because they will change what the tracks look like. And the last S is important not to forget, it's surroundings. So actually looking at the habitat of where the animal is and how it's interacting with its habitat will give you clues as to where does the animal live where does it like to go? Maybe what does it eat? And where does it sleep at night? These are all clues that will help you figure out the identity of the animal. Now to summarize all that we've just learned. The six S's of animal tracking are step, size, stride, straddle, speed, and surroundings. Thank you to Bob Bowles from the Ontario Master Naturalist Program for teaching me these tracking tips. I hope they help you and your family to get outdoors and explore the tracks around your home. In the next tracking video, we will put these observations to the test as we go on a virtual tracking adventure around Fair Glen. The animal we follow won't be revealed until the end, so you can try to guess what it is by the clues that are revealed along the way. This video was created and produced in partnership with Ryan Lamaru Visual Arts. For more information about Fair Glen's day programs, visit discoveroce.com. I look forward to teaching you in our 130-acre outdoor classroom.